Hi there, this is Crystal, and I'm back with another project using the October Afternoon Summertime Collection. Uh, so if you didn't catch my video from yesterday, you may want to go back and watch at least the very beginning of that where I explain where this collection came from and why I've decided to use it. Um, but today I'm using it in Project Life. So this is a spread from 2013. It's super old. It's still unfinished. None of my Project Life albums are completely finished except for last year's. So when I have the time, I go back and fill in some of the pages that I left undone. And this is one of those pages. And I thought that this would be a perfect one to use with this collection since there are lots of summery things happening in these photos. It's week 25, so I think that's around June something. Um, we're grilling out, we're having ice cream. It seemed like the perfect spread to use this collection with. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm starting by just going through the cards and the papers that I have and uh, deciding what I want where. So I have the full two page spread. So back in 2013, I did um, 12 by 12 documenting and I did two pages per week, which seems insane to me now. I've been working in six by eight all year and I, even last year I was doing nine by 12 and just one page per week. So having these humongous um, 12 by 12 double page spreads is, is crazy. But it's what I did for this entire year and I really want to stick to it. Um, I'm not sure if I'll, I will stick to it always, but for this spread at least, I decided I really wanted to stick to it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going through and finding papers and cards that will work um, with all of these photos. So I don't think I have any, maybe one four by six photo in this whole spread. All the rest of them are smaller, so they all need papers or cards to go behind them. There weren't a lot of uh, four by six cards in this, this kit. I think there was only one. So I end up using a lot of the papers. Um, and I just trim them down to four by six and add them behind the photos or elements or whatever else I have going on on the spread and um, it works just fine. So this is a super colorful collection. I really love how this page um, ends up turning out or this spread ends up turning out. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a bit while I'm just going through all of the things and deciding what to put where. I wanted to talk to you a bit about how I manage to do spreads from six years ago and uh, and still add journaling and uh, make it a real documentation, not just um, photos on pretty papers. So back then I used a service called Olife, uh, which is no longer in business, sadly, but um, it's something that you could certainly do pretty easily on your own. So Olife used to send out emails once a day uh, that you would simply respond to, kind of like a diary or a journal. Um, so you could respond to the email and write out all the things that happened in that day or whatever you were feeling or what you did, and it would save it on the Olife site and um, you could access it anytime and uh, download the, um, the entries as text files. So I used to do this almost every day. I used to, um, at the end of the day, right before bed, or as we were sitting and watching TV, just type out the email uh, with whatever we had done that day or even the day before, if I knew I hadn't completed one, and it would save it. And then I went through and printed out uh, weekly text files of all of the things um, that we had done that week. And I saved them, I saved them in my album so that even if I couldn't complete the spread for that week, I would have the journaling and uh, be able to go back and fill it in like I did this week. So this is something you can certainly do, um, you know, just in a notebook or just on a piece of paper, but having it right there in the album, right there with the photos and the spread for this week uh, made it just so easy to go back and fill this in. Uh, when I started uh, this spread and um, was looking at all of these photos, I had no idea what some of them were from. I couldn't remember what we were doing or why I had taken photos of certain things, but that having that journaling just made it, um, made it possible to do this spread. So even if you have every intention of staying on top of your project life or any of your, your documenting or memory keeping, um, always having a journal or some way of writing down memories is always a good idea because you never know if you're not going to get around to it and then later on it's so hard to fill it in without that journaling so there you can see that's that's the text file that I had um, so I just copied it onto a document and printed it out and um, I also wrote down the pictures that I had 
way back when I wrote down whatever pictures I had taken that day so I would know uh, what went with what. So um, I've, I've set aside uh, the right half of this double page spread and I'm working on just this one half because it was just way too much on my desk. I didn't have room to, uh, to do anything with both pages there. So I'm just working on one at a time. I kept both of them out so that I could um, make sure that the colors and patterns were well distributed for the, um, the things I was putting in the background, the papers and cards. But now that I'm just embellishing and working on uh, more fine detail, I just decided to set the one aside and, and work on one side at a time. So I'm working on my title card and yeah, it's been a long time since I've had an actual title card in uh, my Project Live spread. Um, but it was actually really fun. I actually really enjoyed working in this larger format. Um, so I'm just using some super old foam thickers that I had in my stash to spell out week 25. And then um, I also have these very old labels. I think these are Martha Stewart for Staples. So I don't even know if Martha Stewart still has a line at Staples, but um, I probably bought these, honestly, probably about the time <laughs> of this spread. I probably had them that long. Uh, it was a huge pack and I used them a lot. Um, it was There were just so many there that uh, I haven't worked through them yet. And I think I actually had two packs. So there was like a primary color pack and then a more pastel pack. And I think I bought one of each. Uh, so that pink one was from the more pastel one. I'm sure you cannot get those anymore, but really any label sticker um, or, or label cut apart would work for, for that. I'm just gonna use it to add my date. So I really wanted to include this um, little two by two card that came in the, um, in the October afternoon kit from Peachy Cheap, uh, but I couldn't get it to fit on the card as it was, so I just used a circle punch to uh, punch out the sentiment from it, and I'm going to um, add it to the top of the card that way. Uh, it was able to, I was able to fit it on there once I had punched it into a circle. And then to finish it off, I'm just gonna add some of these puffy stickers. These puffy stickers are super cute. I mean, this whole collection is adorable, um, which is why I, I bought it so long after it had been released. But um, those puffy stickers are, are really cute. I end up using a lot of them on this spread. Um, my goal here is to use this up. I don't want to hoard it anymore. I don't want to keep it in my stash. I want it in my album so that I can enjoy it when I'm flipping through and, and, and looking at all of our memories and photos. Um, so that's my goal here. I'm trying to actually use things. So I'm just using some black ink to stamp the dates for this week. Uh, luckily, I had those written down on a little um, sticky note and they were also on that Olive printable. Um, so it was super easy to remember what the dates were and uh, I just stamped the beginning kind of partially inked my date stamp so I could stamp the beginning date and the ending date for this uh, week and then just added a little heart in between as a little divider so the rest of this video is really just me working through each card by card um, which is something that I feel like I haven't done in a long time. I felt super, super rusty when I was making this spread. I haven't done anything on this scale or quite the same way in so long. Um, but like I said, I really enjoyed it. I really had fun just playing around and uh, it, it brought back memories of when this was how I documented um, all of my weeks. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So um, as you can see, I'm just um, adding some cards and embellishments to uh, each of the pockets and some of the photos. Um, some of the photos had kind of word art or journaling already on them and I, I think that I used an app on my phone to do that. I wanna say it was the original A Beautiful Mess app and I can't remember what it was called. Um, I think that's what I used, but I'm not positive. I'm pretty sure it was an app on my phone though. And I remember just sitting um, again while we were, you know, just hanging out of an evening um, and playing around with photos and adding different things on top of them. And then I actually printed these photos. Um, I'm not sure if I printed them at the time, like in 2013, but uh, sh certainly not long after, if not at the time. Um, not all of my unfinished weeks have photos in my albums, but a lot of them do. And they all have a spot. So 
each of my unfinished albums and I started doing Project Life in 2012 so I have a lot of unfinished albums. Um, each of them has a, at least a pocket page in place for the week that is unfinished as, and then there's usually a little um, eight and a half by 11 page protector that's kind of stuck in between them where I keep any journaling I have for the week, um, my Olife printable or printout if I have it, and also any ephemera that I wanted to include. So um, I have set myself up to be able to go back and finish these weeks. Um, even the ones that don't have photos, I, I have all of the photos divided by week um, or at least by month, uh, depending on the year so that I can easily go back and, and just print those out and fill in these weeks. I do intend to finish all of these albums at some point. Um, I, I have every intention of doing that. It may take me, you know, the rest of my life maybe to do it um, since I'm also continuing to do Project Life uh, in, in the current sense of the word. Um, it may take me a long time to get it done, but that is my intention. And I, I believe I can do it. I have, I have confidence in myself that I can actually get it done, especially because, um, you know, this, this wasn't difficult to do. It, it took some time. Uh, it is a fairly long video because it did take some time to, to create this huge spread. Um, but you know, all the elements are there and, and, um, I have no excuse when I have the time or when I have, um, you know, a collection I want to use that works with one of the spreads, I have no excuse not to go back and get it done. So, um, again, if you are trying to do Project Life uh, in the present and um, are struggling to stay on top, I highly recommend uh, just setting yourself up for success in the future by making sure you have journaling or, um, some sort of way of keeping track of your memories so that you don't have to struggle to to put those memories back together to put the pieces of that puzzle back together in the future that that you just have it there for yourself and uh, make it easy for you to go back and fill the these things in so um, you can see I'm adding lots of enamel dots the ones I have now um, I think those are cocoa vanilla and I think they came from a kit at some point um, the other ones were Hip Kit Club. Those were exclusive enamel shapes from Hip, Hip Kit Club. Uh, so I've moved on to the second half of the spread. The first one was done. Uh, I go back and fill in the journaling later on. I didn't do that on camera because that would just take way too long, but you will see it in the finished photos. Uh, so uh, again, I'm just adding um, embellishments and spots for journaling, mostly those labels. Uh, there were two different shapes of labels in I think two different packs. There were kind of square ones and then these longer rectangular ones. I used both on this spread. The colors worked really well for this collection so I stuck mainly to those labels for journaling spots. And then again the puffy stickers that were from this collection, those cocoa vanilla vanilla enamel dots and then the ones from Hip Kit Club that were um, just hearts. Um, those are the main bits of embellishments. Uh, that I'm using for this spread just to finish everything off. That and the ephemera pack, of course, that came with this kit. I think I do have some other labels sitting there. Those are also super old. Those are Smashbook labels. I don't remember if I actually use any on this spread, but again, the colors worked really well. You can see them there just in the um, the right corner of the, of the video. They're just kind of peeking out. They were more visible. I think I, I threw something on top of them just a second ago, but I don't remember if I actually use any of those. I might use one. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the spread and I don't have it in front of me. But um, again, super old <laughs> stash here. So it's kind of fun to pull out um, these older supplies as I'm working on an older um, spread. It, it makes sense in my mind that I should use older supplies with older spreads, although I definitely don't have any problem with um, using newer newer supplies with these older pages either. So whatever really works with the uh, content of the pages I'm trying to document, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, I definitely um, let the content drive the uh, supplies that I use. So um, yeah, it's just lots of more of the same. So everything just kind of came together. It it was a lot of fun to create, like I've said probably a hundred times in this video. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, 
The hardest part for me in doing these older spreads is sometimes the quality of the photos because I certainly didn't have, um, I think most of them were taken with my phone at the time, which was of course not as good quality as the one I have now. Um, I did have a point and shoot, but I don't think I used it very often. Uh, maybe for some of the outdoor photos because it did much better outdoors than indoors. But like that one I was just working on is a photo of me taking down wallpaper in our dining room. And it's a terrible photo, but um, you know, that's the thing I have to, to commemorate that moment in our life and that um, to, to document that memory. So that's what I use because uh, it's better to have a terrible photo and have it uh, be documented than to leave it out just because the photo isn't as good of quality as it would be today. So I'm nearly finished with this side. I do have a ton of close-up photos at the end of this video, so you can see all the details on these pages. Um, thank you so much for watching if you stuck with this video for this long. Um, I really appreciate uh, the fact that you took the time out of your day to watch this. And I hope that this has given you some inspiration and maybe will inspire you to go back and fill in some of your pages that haven't been completed yet. So um, again, lots of close-up photos coming up. If you have any questions about anything I've done here or anything I've used, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you. And uh, if you did find inspiration here and enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It means the world to me to know that you guys are enjoying what I'm creating. And uh, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, be sure to do that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all back here very soon.